Welcome to the shack out back. Sorry about the technical difficulties we are having. We have a video coming out that's kind of Frankenstein together. Um, because apparently while we were recording, it would shut off on you every like five minutes. And then it would kick back on. These things have a mind of their own. And it's real annoying. So anyway, it was really good podcast we had last week. And we were trying to get out to you guys. We had my dad come in. And, and then uh, old Smiley over here had a really... Had, I had a good day. Yeah, it was a good day for you. You had a lot of conversations, so it's definitely worth watching, but we're sorry. We're working on it. So we're looking at mics and everything yeah, and trying yeah. to upgrade so we don't run into this issue very often. So we're getting there, guys. We're slow, but we're coming. Um, but anyway, so welcome to the Shack Out Back. Uh, we are going to talk about today was... Well done, good and faithful servant. That passage in the Bible, um, just type that into Google, it'll pop right back up. It's basically when you come to judgment scene, you want Jesus to look at you and say, well done, good and faithful servant. That's definitely the best possible remark you could be expecting from Jesus. And so if you don't hear that, you're not in a good place like you don't want to be on the other end of that well you want to fix it before you get to that point yes and honestly we're human and so we're going to talk about a little bit of like how we deal with that scripture in our own personal lives and the valleys that we have and the mountains that we have but just real people doing their best to follow Jesus so easy that a bearded mechanic can understand it hopefully and so that was it. And so the first question I had was, before we get to the final test, you know, it would be a good idea maybe to ask yourself that during the day. You know, like, if you're in the middle of doing something or the way your life is kind of turning out, just to kind of set back and look and say, okay, if Jesus saw everything that I got going on right now, would he look at me and say, well done, good and faithful servant? Because really that's, that's the truth. I mean, that's that's going to be your answer in the judgment, you know, because there's that scripture in the uh, the New Testament where it says God's not mocked. In other words, you can't fool him. You know, you can fool a lot of people around you, but that real good and faithful servant, he knows whether or not you are. And so that's why it's very important on your journey to always kind of check yourself. And that's really what the Lord's Supper is about in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. He's telling you to judge yourselves. Constantly looking inward to yourself and looking and, and comparing yourself to what is going to happen. And so that's what we wanted to talk about tonight. And I don't know. Do you have any examples of what you could be doing, looking in your life and saying, is, is God able to say good and faithful servant? You know, I, I look at work, you know what I'm saying? Work, your family situation, people in your family that Oh, it's making family life hard, you know what I'm saying? Like brothers or sisters or anything, you know, aunts, uncles, anything. And what are you doing then for God to look at in your life, good and faithful servant? Are you doing something about it? And I don't know. I, that's a good question because I don't think naturally like that. No. You know, because if somebody in the family does something, first reaction, I have a, a large family, six brothers and sisters, you get irritated a little bit. You see what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Instead of looking and saying, okay, how do we go about this the way that's loving that person? You know? and Because that, that's what Jesus would do. Isn't that what we came to do is be ambassadors for Christ and to love each other? And that's how they see Christ is through us. And so, you know, that's... It's through kind of, your work. Yeah, through yeah. what you do. Yeah. And James went all about that. But... I guess what it comes down to is faith, isn't it? Jesus said your faith will save you. So, like, what's faith? I don't know. Let's just get real, like, simple. I have faith that, I don't know, that the sun is going to rise every morning I wake up. So when I go to bed, I'm always looking at what time I'm going to bed because I know that sun is coming up at a certain time. 
You know what I'm saying? And so if I have to work at a certain time, I have faith that tomorrow is coming and work is coming along with it. And so that like changes how you treat the evenings, doesn't it? Because yeah, then you prepare. Sure. Yeah, you prepare for work. You know, you don't stay up till 4:30 in the morning. You know, drinking coffee and eating jelly beans. You're, you're, <laughs> that sounds like a wild night. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you prepare for what you know is coming. So it's it's safe to say that you you have faith that this is going to happen tomorrow. And so that would lead us to that passage that you brought up: a faith of a mustard seed. Yeah. You want me to read it? Yeah, read that. Yeah, sure. I got so many of them. Yeah, he's looking up like a hundred verses over there. We had to cut them off. <laughs> it was getting a little ridiculous. <laughs> Somehow I have two pens right now. I don't. I can never find a pen when I need like one. Like I'm flying out of the ceiling. <laughs> right. Oh my goodness. Which one was that? Uh, let's see. Big tree is Matthew twenty one twenty one. Yeah, that's good. No, 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 that's not it. No, it's Matthew seventeen twenty. I got like a, a hundred Matthews and a hundred Hebrews. So Matthew seventeen twenty. Let's do this. He's gonna punch you down. But what we're, but what it says is if you have the faith of a mustard seed, you know, pretty much whatever you believe in or whatever you do it's gonna it's gonna happen and then we were talking about a bunch of scriptures too while he's looking for that there was like matthew 21 21 if you guys want to look that up it was like you guys remember when jesus had the fig tree and he basically it was not producing fruit so he got like rid of it the disciples were watching him and he says listen if you have faith like a mustard seed it, you can do the same thing Anything is possible. Yeah, like anything is possible. Yeah. And so, I mean, I don't see that happening today. Do you? Uh, I, I have it right here. All right, he read says, it up. He said to them, because your little faith, for truly I say to you, if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Yeah. And so that goes right along with that book I'm reading, As a Man Thinketh. And that's kind of like, it's the development of your mind and your, your, your flesh. You know what I'm saying? You believe that you can do something enough, and you put your effort toward it, you accomplish it. Yeah. And I think that's what he's saying. Like, this, Which if you've seen a grain of a mustard seed, that thing is tiny. Yeah. So if you just have that little bit of faith. Yeah, and so a little bit of the real thing, though. You know, so like, let's define faith. What is it? And so it's like, everybody gets this thing mixed up and the religious circle is like, oh, just say this prayer and you'll be all right. And just confess Jesus, you'll be all right. It says all of that, yes. And so, you know, it's not a bad thing to do those things and to practice those things. But that buck doesn't stop there. You know, why did you do those things? Because you believe something so much is coming that it moved you to make a decision on how to start maybe changing a little bit. Prepare for that. Just like we do that at night to prepare a little bit for work. You know, you guys go to bed kind of early because you guys wake up super early, you and Melissa, don't you? Yeah. So they, they're they always trying to get to bed at like 8.30, about 9 o'clock. Right yeah, about <laughs> right this second. And so it's like they're constantly preparing for what they know to be true in the morning. And so Hebrews 11 verse 1 through 3, describes faith better than any other passage that I've ever looked at. It's Kim's favorite, and it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. So faith is the substance of things hoped for. What could that possibly be talking about? And then Jesus says, if you have just real faith, as small as a mustard seed, there's nothing that's incapable of I mean, faith is the substance. What's the substance? Let's let's break this down. It's pretty much the foundation of of what Christianity is about, in my opinion. Right. Because if you have faith in in God, then He will set your path, and He will 
if, if, if you truly trust in him, he will make everything happen for you. Right, and then what happens, like you're saying, becomes tangible. You can yeah. see it, right? Can't you? Oh, yeah. So like when you start doing something, or like say you want to get good at basketball, and so you're out there practicing it every day, and you start hitting shots when you're open every time. People, it's evident to people what you're doing. You're practicing. So like something that you had faith about would happen someday. So like you believe if I practice enough, if I put my effort into this enough, I will be good at it someday. And so eventually that faith becomes tangible. People can now see you've created something. And so that's what this is talking about. It says now faith is a substance, something tangible that's been created based so on... You can feel, see... Yeah, something that is visibly, like, obvious. You know, and so that's why he's saying this faith is, is it's a substance of things hoped for. So what the whole world hopes for, and they can see it in you. You know what I'm saying? And I honestly believe that has a lot to do with people's ability to, to attract people. Is because... Well, yeah, somebody you, sees somebody having a good time, or, you know, like, seeing their walk, they're like, wow. And then it spreads, and more and more people right. carry on with it. And what did the Bible say? He wrote the truth on your heart, right? And so everybody has the same truth written on their heart. Let's, you know, let's not be, like, complicated about this. So when they see what God has basically put inside of them to be like, He created you for good works and to be a certain way. That's how your body functions better. And so when they see that, they don't realize what they're even looking at, but they're attracted to it because God designed them to be attracted to it. You see what I'm saying? And so it's like faith is that substance, is that tangible thing of all these things that we hope for. People can start seeing these things that we hope for in another human being. And then it goes on to say it's the evidence, so therefore it becomes evidence of the things that we can't see. And so he's basically laying a, a, an easy formula of what Matt James says, our good old buddy Jimmy. Faith without works is what? Dead. Dead nothing it's not evidence it's not substance it's nothing it's so and like you got to do something with your faith yeah and that's a lot of congregations are just pushing that one thought of like just believe just believe just believe yeah. just believe and it's like maybe they mean well because they understand the deeper meaning behind that belief you know it's going to lead to something else but a lot of people just get real comfortable with just saying yeah i believe jesus is real and they never do nothing about it to prepare. They never do nothing to it about it to thank him for what he's done for them. And so, guys, those people don't have faith. They have their fans, not faith. Well, they don't have steadfastness. Yeah, like James also talks about. Yeah, and one three it says, if you know that that the testing of your faith produces steadfast. Yeah. You know, which means I'm steadfast with my faith and with my works. Yeah, and that's when people can see the substance of that faith. When something happens, and then shortly <coughs> after that, he says, he will give you a peace that passes all understanding. You know, and James, he starts talking about this peace that passes all understanding. Well, when people look at you, they don't understand how you could be at peace. Well, it all comes back to this faith. Like, what do you really believe? And that's why Jesus, honestly, I think he said, you know, it is your faith that saves you. You know, it's that thing that pushes you forward. And so, therefore, it says, verse 2, for by it, the elders obtain their good report. And so, he's going into the elders. This is how they're checking themselves. You know what I'm saying? Based on faith. And what is faith? Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. So, that scripture is not saying that if you become a Christian and start praying and believing all these things to be true, it's going to start happening to you, like a lot of false teachers are saying now. You know, they've created like a feel-good like church service where it's just like, just believe and it's going to happen and your life's going to be great and this and that. That's not what it's saying. Because actually, it would be the opposite of that. Because he's talking to spiritually intellectual people that know about, I think, these things a little bit better than we do. See, we're so distracted with like phones... We're so distracted with this, with this, with this. Life's so busy, 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 busy. And it just distracts you from thinking about the meaning of life, you know? 
I was just thinking like how intricate God created it and wanted us to have a relationship with nature and this world and all this stuff. And it's just like we've been pulled away, so our, our spiritual mindset is not near as good as these people that he's talking to. And so when he's saying, like, hey, if you believe something enough, they understood that he's not talking like I'm going to pray for a hundred beautiful wives. You know, obviously he's not meaning that. He's talking about the scriptures, faith and the truth. And so, and then so verse 3 it says, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. And so, he's basically saying, it's just like, they're going to be able to see this truth in you that we can see in nature. We know that the things here in nature were made, but we do don't see the things that make them up. Does that make sense? Like, scientists, they've discovered, like, atoms and genetics and all these things. They're, they're, they're all these, like, computer codes, basically, that, that work together that make you up into work of art that you are. None of those things are seen. You know what I'm saying? We don't know about them unless we, like, get a microscope and see them. God's saying, in that way, it's very similar. I am still very real, and I'm present. I'm just super, super small, <laughs> like an atom. But he's not talking about that. He's talking about, he's, he's just present. That's how he's present. He's present in his creation. So think about it. You know, maybe a food for thought. Chew on that one for a second. You know, what does that mean? Yeah. You know, he's referring it to atoms and stuff. So he's just as present as those invisible DNA codes are. Oh, that's what he like brings up with the mustard seed too yeah something so tiny yeah and that would make sense i mean there's so many things that make sense about that but then if you look at everything as a whole he's in everything right he's connected to everything and if you understand nature i we were just i was watching this podcast on um and they were talking about just the salmon and like the ecosystem that surrounds the salmon in alaska so what on earth would have the salmon swim out of its place of spawning down this creek into the ocean or whatever to bigger streams and then when they get pregnant they they want to come back and spawn where they were spawning and so they literally after like I don't know a couple years of living out in the real world they make that long haul back into making they're home. going from fresh water to salt water. Yeah, and they go back. What would cause them to do that? And it's weird because think about nature. Like, let's just, like, put nature on, on, on the microphone here for a second. It tries everything it can to make sure that salmon doesn't get there. Think about it. It's upstream. They got to jump over, like, little baby waterfalls. Mm -hmm. And then just throw a big old grizzly bear in the middle of it. Just, <laughs> like, really. waiting for them, you know? It's just like, you know, their journey could not be any worse. And then you throw a bear just waiting. And then upstream for very good. Yeah. Five yeah, different upstream, fishermen. You're, you're going against the current. Yeah. And you got five fishermen sitting there waiting for them to come, too. Yeah, like, <laughs> nature is hard. It's harsh. And we've lost that as a civilization because we're destroying nature. We're not spending enough time in it. That's how things were created. And it's weird because it almost gets rid of the salmon that shouldn't be producing. Right? Mm -hmm. It's like if you're weak enough, if you're not strong enough the way God had created you to be, if you're not strong enough to do this, you're not going to make it. And it's, it's weird. It's because like now shift back to us and our walk with Jesus. It's like God made you capable of having faith and and understanding this book and then living it. You know, if you don't treat this like it's super serious, you're going to be like one of the salmon that just don't make it. A bear is waiting for you. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Just look at how God is through nature. He teaches you a lot of lessons. Well, that's like a huge analogy. Right. You know, the bear is the devil. Waiting to snatch you up. Right, just waiting for you. Yeah. And it's going to be hard. And, and it was the, never supposed the to be. The current's like the world of worldly things, just being yeah, constantly you. pushing beat, you backwards. Beat, yeah. yeah, and, and you got to go. And then this thing, the, this faith thing, comes into play to destroy all that. Why do those things get back to the spawn? Because there's something in them that tells them they have to. 
and they believe it so strongly that they do things they never thought we never thought were capable of fish until we see them doing it. And it's just it, it, it's amazing what the salmon do. To be completely honest with you, they're amazing creatures. And then like you take that away, you know that's like a whole ecosystem because all the salmon that die, they fertilize the water for everything else to live. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So everything's so tightly connected in nature. It, it's so relying on everything else. And so those little creatures are waiting on the salmon just like we were waiting on our manna from heaven. You see what I'm saying? And then there's that scripture that says, dude, he knows every bird and every sparrow. And not one of them falls without him knowing about it. And he has every hair on your head numbered. And so that's the kind of God we're talking about. You can't fool that kind of God with some fake faith. You know what I'm saying? Some are just easier than others. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, what is it? I'm going to read one more verse, and then you guys take a verse. Verse 6 in Hebrews 11 also says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is rewarder of them who diligently seek him. And so that's where that faith of the mustard seed, you have to believe that so strongly that when you walk away today, you have to, you have to say to yourself, like, I believe that he is rewarder of those who diligently seek after him. And then, then all these scriptures come into play, dude. It's James, when he says, you draw near to him, he will draw near to you then. Then this process begins. This relationship with God starts like forming in your life, and it starts becoming evident that God is actually with you. And I think that's what we're missing. I mean, we're, we're more concerned in the church, man, whether or not we're allowed to use instruments or not. Yeah. And we want to fight about that. And then we want to fight about how we do service, or how this happens, or how this happens. And I get all those arguments. I mean, if, if you want to like go down that rabbit hole, I, I got really good arguments for all that, biblical ar arguments. But it's at some point, guys, put your weapons away, and are, are we believing in our personal lives so greatly that our job is to love each other, and our job is to help each other, and our job is to just be like Jesus to a point where that stuff can be dealt with. We can, we can, we can kind of, we can be patient with certain things, and we can love people anyway, and we can fellowship with people anyway. Like think about that, um, and staying biblical though. You know, don't let's not get carried away. You know what I'm saying? But there's a way I think we can do that. But it all comes. That process never begins in anybody's mind unless first they have this faith that the Bible's talking about. This thing that drives them, that convinces them that this is going to happen someday. And I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to give some kind of answer. And so I better change something. I'm going to start doing something. I'm going to start drawing near to him because he's promised me that he's going to draw near back to me. And then I think that's when we start seeing these scriptures come real. I think that's when things start happening in our lives that are just like, you can't really explain them. Um, I don't know. Did you have a scripture there? Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, If we walk by faith, not by sight. Right. Uh, er, er, that's just the worldly things. Oh, I, I have to see it to believe it. So it's just a worldly thing. But if you have faith, then you don't need to see it. You you have faith in God that it's going to happen. Right, and it's funny because that'll actually, they will see it in you. Based on what faith does, it creates a substance. Exactly. Of something that they can visually see. You know? And it's, it's interesting, man. Like, have you ever really broke down faith before from Hebrews chapter <coughs> 11? That's what it's saying. And then, then it leads us to, on our walk with Christ, today, in Jesus' walk with Christ, back then. What are some patterns that we see? How did Jesus do it? Because, guys, I'm 31, and I still haven't figured out exactly how to do it, so I'm going to stop trying to do what Seth does. 
And I got to look to somebody who did it perfectly, and that's Jesus. So he spent a lot of time praying by himself. Yeah. There's multiple scriptures in the Bible on it. There's like, like, how many do you have down here that you looked at? Uh, at least five. Just, just start rattling them off. <laughs> There's Mark one, thirty-five. Mark six through forty-six. Luke six twelve. Luke nine eighteen. Which Mark was a big one. As it was, uh, he went and prayed before he went and walked on water. That was the Mark 6 one, right? Yeah, Mark 6, 46. And so that was like right after feeding a bunch of those people. Yeah, it said, Immediately Jesus had his disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to Bethsaida. Bethsaida, while he dismissed the crowd after leaving. Then he went up on the mountainside to pray. And then later that night, the boat was in the middle of the lake and he was alone on land he saw disciples straining at the oars because the wind was against them shortly before dawn he went out to them walking on the lake he was about to pass by them but when they saw him walking on the lake they thought it was a ghost or like a spirit and so what did he do right before that occurred he went up uh, on the mountain by himself and prayed about it. Yeah, right after his long day feeding everybody, he he snuck away and he spent time with God, kind of to like rebuild that like connection, that relationship because Jesus had the ultimate faith. He knew. He saw behind the curtain. He knew it was real. But he still had to pray about it though. Yeah, but his fleshly body, he had disciplined himself to constantly go back to that quiet place with God to rebuild rekindle that relationship to make sure like he was on this right path that he was asking himself questions good and faithful servant am I there am I there God am I am I doing that right now like you know and it takes me back to David King David remember those Psalms that he would write he'd say try me O Lord know my innermost man like test me am I am I a good and faithful servant like you see these great faith stories of the Old Testament and the New Testament that we're doing this question is are you doing it few be there that find it broad is the path to destruction so you have to pick up on these patterns and we just listed one two three four five and there's more of them oh there's a lot more yeah there's five scriptures where Jesus took off by himself and he studied or prayed there's um one of them I liked really well. I think it was in Luke, the one that he left a long time before everybody woke up. Mm, that was Mark 7, uh, 135. Oh, he yeah, that's right. Before. Mark 135. Yeah. Okay, so that's the one. Mark 135 is the one that he woke up before everybody else woke up. Yeah. And he spent time with God before his day started. And so me and Kim were, were kind of trying that. We're reading through Mark. And that's like, that's tough, man. Waking <laughs> up in the morning and then... Getting yourself focused, and sometimes I barely have enough time to wake up in the morning, put my clothes on. I don't. Like, that's how I roll, dude. I wake up and then I throw my clothes on and I'm out the door. So it's like, you know, adjusting there. But like seriously, if you think it's real, well, it's like what you're talking about earlier. Is though. it coming? You got to prepare yourself beforehand. So yeah. You're ready. Exactly. That's what Jesus was doing. So it's like I hadn't been doing that, and so I, I've kind of been failing here and there you know what I'm saying hadn't been on like my game spiritually and it's like well I'm not following the pattern that Jesus followed and so like I can't make it doing what I was doing like you have to follow a certain pattern and that I think that's why Jesus is overwhelmingly the key factor in all the apostles they're just pointing you to Jesus and that's what Paul says like you know I don't want to have a conversation with you other than Jesus and Jesus crucified like, he didn't want to have side conversations with the church in Corinth. He just wanted to talk about Jesus because he said, I'm convinced every bit of in intellectual information, knowledge, growth is in that man. Just study him. Just see what he did. And it's just like, then you got to, like, pick up your life and say, well, how close do I look? And then you ask God, am I being a good and faithful servant? You know, you... If you're an honest person, you probably feel a little bit guilty. 
You know what I'm saying? It's like, no. That's like, I always go back to Jordan Peterson, that psychologist. You guys know about him? No. Jordan Peterson? He's like an up-and-coming psychologist. Really, like, he, he believes in Christ. He explains the Bible really well. But he was, it was that question. He said, like, somebody asked him if he believed in Jesus. And he just, like, he had a hard time answering it. He's like, yes, I do. But he's like, the way I understand belief is, do I really believe in him? You know, like, he's doing all these things for Christ, right? He, he's, he's explaining the Bible to intellects. He's like, he is making a difference in the world for good. And it's like, you ask him, do you believe in Jesus? And even he's taken back a little bit, like, man, if I really believe this was real, this is happening, this is going to happen someday. He said, would I be any different? Like, you see what I'm saying? He was like, he was getting to the heart of what this is actually trying to get you to understand. And he kind of even shook a little bit. It was like, ooh, I don't know if I believe. Like, I do, but my actions... Do they really prove that I believe this is real? It's coming. It's, it's going to happen. But he, he may have been being tested, you know. Right. And, and in 1 Peter 1, 7, it says, So that the tested uh, genuine, uh, genuineness, there we go. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> genuineness. Why, of your why faith. have that word anymore? You know, this is the 21st century. <laughs> <laughs> uh genuineness in your faith more <laughs> precious than gold that perishes through the tested by fire may be found in the result of praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ and isn't that the story the salmon did through the fire and flames they get to their yeah. spawn you know what I'm saying through the bare teeth and everything it's all a test yeah and it's the way he created it it's evident in nature. That's the way he was done. And so it's going to happen to you. You have to go through a similar process. And it's almost like if the world, if life is easy on you, it's kind of like a disservice. Because then you're going to take things for granted. Yeah, like you aren't who you could be if things were a little bit tougher. You know what I'm saying? I'll give you a perfect example of this. So you take a super good looking blonde girl that's head of her cheerleading squad captain right and you give her a, like a stick right and you throw her in the ring and then you, you take this other girl it doesn't get enough a whole lot of attention you know she has chores when she goes home she has a military father that makes her life a little bit rough you know what I'm saying things aren't just handed to her on a silver platter, platter. <laughs> and you give her a stick and you put them in a ring together who comes out of that alive you know, think about it. Who, who's the better? Who's the better uh, fighter? It's going to be the one that's been through more stuff. They're just going to be better. The other one is not going to know like how to survive. Mm -hmm. And I, honestly, it's it's a funny analogy, but that's really what it comes down to. It's like your faith is almost gauged by what you go through and how you handle it. And so that's why the 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 disciples were constantly trying to get the churches to understand it says blessed are you if you find yourself in these trials because of your faith knowing that the testing of your faith it works steadfast into that into eternal life and this is the process and you are in a good situation God is with you and so it's really cool how everything works together nature spiritual things your life you know all these things and they all umbrella under this one thought Faith. How great is your faith? What have you done in your life to adjust it, to prepare yourself for those words? You know? Yeah, there's another good uh, scripture in that Romans 12, 2, that says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewer of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good, acceptable, and perfect. And that, you know, the world, the, the stream, they're swimming against stream. Guys, the world, you're in it, you're swimming against the world. Oh, man. I think Christians need to start making movies. That's what I think. You see what I'm saying? It's because the world, you want an entertainment value. 
and then you try to watch the stuff that they're producing these days, and it's, I don't know. It's not yeah, something you should be yeah, filling your head up, with. Putting you know? up blockers on your walk really. right and so like i just find like netflix all these little things in your life it's just like gets the list gets smaller and smaller and smaller the things that you can actually let yourself watch without being guilty about it you know what i'm saying i go to youtube a lot yeah i'm a youtube guy or i'll just <laughs> yeah. watch the office a thousand times i can't stop it because it's the only thing that like i you know is like decent you know what i'm saying yeah. it's not like just crazy like immoral you know but the rifle man's pretty good too. Yeah, that's Which a good he, one. He puts up a lot of Bible verses in the rifle man. Oh, does he? Yeah, yes, he does. Both sides. Yeah. 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 That's on YouTube. No, it's a uh, well. You can get it on Amazon Prime on video because it's like a TV series. Oh, uh, okay. Yep. The rifle man. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, that's kind of what we were thinking. Do you guys have anything else to add to that personal story? Oh, we, or? we could do this for the next millennia. <laughs> right. Give me, give me one, uh, just one uh, thought from outside of me because I've been talking too much about this subject in your guys' life. Well, I think uh, one part is uh, we're going to have to go through and figure out some of these big words so we don't have, uh, so we can get a little better understanding. <laughs> Right, but uh, well, that comes from reading, yeah. you know. But a lot of it we have to like, cause I, I know I'm bad at, but we gotta uh, prepare ourselves for the coming. Cause like, even I, I'll stay up late watching videos before I gotta go to work the next day, and it's just a pain in the butt trying to get up in the morning. Yeah, and get ready. You suffer. <laughs> Last, for it. Oh I yeah, you too. Yeah. Which, that's the whole thing. If you don't prepare yourself, you're going to suffer. Yeah, there so, you go. Yeah, yeah, you suffer. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Yeah, at the end of the time, you, you suffer if you're not yeah. prepared. Yeah. 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 That's about all I got. Yeah, I think, I think it's impossible to do this without knowing this book. If you guys don't know this book, you know how, like, we're throwing scriptures at each other? I mean... Even if you don't know the scripture, when you really believe, you read enough of this book to have that mustard seed faith, and you know what's real, it, it starts, when you come into these conversations, you want to be a part of the conversation, because you know it's real, and so you, you see you guys over there looking for scriptures, like you're so open-minded about the scriptures, that you know, without even knowing, that there's going to be another scripture about it, you know what I'm saying, and it's just like, that's the process, I think, of what everybody needs to be, is like, we have to start using this book, not beating people up with it, but just so you can, like, know how to react in your life, in your own personal situation, you know, and if you don't know this book, you're not going to make it, but and that, they all, like, a lot of the scriptures link together as you go on, too, like, something you read about in James, you'll find it in Luke, or, you know, vice versa. Yeah, it's it, yeah, it's not complicated. It just it talks about the human condition, and if you're honest about your human condition, you see yourself in the scriptures every time he's talking to a church. It's because he's he's real. He's a man. He's he's a human being that messes up and isn't perfect like Jesus, but he's trying to be. And so he's finding these things out about himself, and he's trying to train other people to find these things out about yourself, so that we can be the church. The true church that God was after, the ones that worship Him in spirit and truth. And so, guys, without knowing your scriptures, you can't be a true worshiper of God. Because you won't know the truth. And then, without having this faith, you won't have the spirit. You know, which, you're not a true worshiper if you don't have the spirit of Christ. You just, you're not real. And that's, I guess, that's where we're at. We just, there's so many things in the religious realm that can distract you from the most important thing Jesus came to tell us. You know, we get caught up on all these dumb things. Honestly, they're dumb. When it comes down to what's the most important thing, guys, we got to get ourselves ready and our faith. We have to build up our belief and start doing something. 
to start strengthening our resolve and what's coming. You know what I'm saying? We gotta stop worrying about all these minuscule things and we gotta start becoming these people that are ready to hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. And that never happens unless you ask yourself every day, am I being a good and faithful servant right now? Well, another uh, fix up on our uh, mishaps on the videos. Yeah, we gotta change our process. <laughs> Sorry, guys. But so we're going to end this up with a prayer. So everybody bow with me. Dear Lord, uh, thank you for these times you've given us. And uh, just be with those that are in need and help us uh, pull those closer to you that need to find you, Lord, and help us find their faith. And uh, just give us a guiding hand and uh, keep us safe and healthy, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Love you guys. We'll see you, Lord willing, next week with better technology. Hopefully. <laughs> huh.